So as you can see, we have some brood, some cup brood. And we have some open brood there, or wet brood. Okay, my name is Richard Mathias. I'm the president of the Ayanola Apiculture Collective. Um, this particular location um, at the uh, Casa del Vega in Vigi, where we have our interpretation center located. Um, it was originally conceptualized as a project for tourism, so we could incorporate work with the cruise ship passengers to when they come briefly to St. Lucia for an hour or so, that they could come um, experience the bees, experience some different f flavors of honey, um, different types of food cooked with honey, and get a little bit of, about a little bit of the history of apiculture in the Caribbean and especially St. Lucia. And then we also have uh, some hives here which they can do a hive inspection and see the queen and the drones and the worker bees and taste the honey directly from the hive. So um, because of COVID, uh, we had to adapt a little bit. Um, and we, started to pursue doing local training um, and holding seminars for local beekeepers and persons that are interested in getting into beekeeping. The bees we have in there are very nice gentle bees. Uh, we've specifically bred them uh, for this location. We've looked at the characteristics of all of our different hives. This still works in the same bad condition. These are a number of you know general citizens of St. Lucia that have uh, interested in getting to learn a little bit more about beekeeping before they start making financial investment into beekeeping. Uh, we found that a lot of people, um, <clears throat> they hear about beekeeping, they hear about the potential revenue that can be derived from you know, producing honey, but there's not much background given into, well, you know, this is not just the bees in the box and the bees do their thing, you have to manage it as, it, as in the, it's livestock. Um, so there's a lot of do's and don'ts, a lot of things you need to learn. So we developed this six-week course um, to allow people who have an interest in the subject to give them some exposure, take them out on a few field trips, come to a few of our apries. That's a crown board, so we pop the crown board off. Smooth. And really give them the technical uh, insight to the technical support they will really need to know before they make the plunge. So before you take out a couple of hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or more, and you invest in bees, and then you know that's you give up after six months. That's money down the drain. Where if you get a gradual introduction and you can gauge if this is what you really want to do. This is a cell builder, and a cell builder is saturated with nurse bees. And nurse bees because. Nurse bees produce uh, secretion called royal jelly. My name is Mujahid and I represent an organization called ASRAM, which stands for Association of St. Lucian Muslims. We, we respect nature as Muslims and we, we want to find a way to live in harmony with nature. So it was just natural for us to gravitate towards like bees. My name is Denzel Louis and I'm from Marvin Posa. Well, I've learned a lot of new things about the different species and how to where to set up the hives and how to set them up in the proper spots. In this area here we have some 12 hour lava. So this is going to be our grafting frame. Apiculture is um you see, it's all about the numbers. Um, beekeeping is about the numbers. The more colonies of hives you have, is the more honey potential you can produce. So you obviously, if you're a honey producer, you want to have as many hives as possible. Um, so the equipment will cost a little bit. So we just look for the queen again quickly. She will be walking, so we will be looking. We'll be looking across the frame just to try to spot her. Where, where, where you can um, grow easily with bees is that once you've got say you've got your first five or six colony of bees you can multiply those colonies into more bees as time goes by um, with good management techniques um, you can do that so once you buy your first five colonies technically you don't need to buy any more colonies after that okay my name is Jocelyn Mather mm -hmm. um, a new upcoming beekeeper me being a chef how I like to know how where this the, my products come from I like to know where the honey comes from, how it's produced, what goes on in producing honey. So that's what I'm here for to, to learn. I find it's really opened up my mind. I was only looking at bees as some <laughs> or pests or something to sting me. But now I actually see like opportunity with it. 
So I don't know if I'll go into it right away, but it was an eye opener for me, and it's probably another direction you know you could take. It's gonna be a cost. You have to buy boxes. You have to buy frames. You have to get the different things to manage your bees to keep your bees healthy. All right. So there are a number of different things along the way that you would need that will clock up the money. Why did you you think you will get into honey production? Uh, my thing is because it's a good secondary income uh, for myself and. There's also good practices you can learn from it as well. Mm -hmm. So now that you're getting this deeper appreciation of what's involved, is, is this something that you think you'd like to do for a while? Oh yes. I think this is something that I can easily fit into any of anything that I'm doing. It's something that's quick, easy and when, you are, when you're in the right community, people will always come and help you no matter what you do. Only going into bee farming for honey will not make you a millionaire. You actually have to. <laughs> Yeah, that's the most important thing. You actually have to look at the other aspects of having bees to actually benefit from it. That and a lot of other stuff I've learned here. We also the, the practical aspect of it. Um, today we'll be doing like grafting. We'll be grafting queens, like basically making more queens. Um, yeah, it, it's really good. It's a good thing, and I I would encourage anybody to to look into apiculture. Yeah, it's it's profitable, but you shouldn't do it for the money, you should do it because of the passion and the benefits it has for the environment. Well, as you can see from our, our project here, we got a lot of assistance from um, Jeff SGP. Uh, that's, I mean, we've got a lot of help through them over the years um, and they helped a lot of apiculture projects in St. Lucia. You know, there's a lot of awareness and as long as people are aware of the importance of bees um, into the biodiversity of the, of the country, um, it's all good. So I mean the more people are aware of bees and they think about bees and the less they use harmful chemicals like Gramaxone and Touchdown which can have, di have been proven to have um, diverse effects on the bees um, globally. Um, it's, we're all in good stead. So it's important that um, if you want to look at your natural ecosystems, your, your rainforests, your mangroves, your natural forests, it's very important that bees are there to help pollinate these trees, these plants, to help keep them going. Because bees, um, they, they agitate them, they, they, um, they force the plants to grow, they force them to flower. Immediately after this we're heading somewhere else, um, yeah. Shabbat, what exactly is going to be happening there? Um, in Shabbat we have one of our breeding facilities in Shabbat. Um, and we're going to be doing some, probably making some queens in Shabbat. Um, also, some of the guys, part of the training is to work on producing wax foundation um, stuff. So we're going to look at a few different aspects of the apiculture business and to see, you know, give some, shed some different light. In this capilla here, in this capilla here, and we follow this um, drone semen. And we will have a queen position right here. We collect drones, we put them in this bag, and then we have, and then we squeeze them and we harvest and spell of them. We pull them up, and as you can see, we have some queen cells developing. Um, our motto is more than just honey, so we're not just interested in honey production. Um, as I stated before, we are breeders, we focus a lot on breeding really good quality top queens. So, hello guys, so my name is John Frederick. Uh, I am the Vice President of the Ionola Apiculture Collective and uh, part of my role is to graft beautiful queens for the Ionola Apiculture Collective and uh, Salvation Beekeepers. Okay, so I think we found the frame of the correct age. In this area here, we have some 12 hour lava. So this is going to be our grafting frame. So grafting is the process by which you pick up a 12 hour lava and you place it onto a small puddle of royal jelly. Uh, to graft, these are the tools that you'll be needing. You'll be needing um, royal jelly to prime your cells. You will be needing the cell cups and the cell cup holders. You'll be needing a grafting tool. This is a Chinese grafting tool. My uh, preferable one is a brush, pin brush. It's important that you prime your cells. You could prime it with royal jelly. Some people prime it with water. Just a little dab, just to keep the lava moist. Yeah. 
So after this process, so we then take the, the bar and then we place it into the, the cell building. So those cells, they would have to be packed with royal jelly because that's the food that the, the queens would, would live on, would survive on. So we place it down into the cell building. So the bees will start polishing up the cells and then they will start caring for the lava that they placed in the cells. So we put our feeder on. After uh, 24 hours we go in, we take out the bar and we put it into the cell finisher. The cell finisher is another hive. Another hive? Yes. With a queen in, in it. So it's a queen right colony. The cell builder is a, a queenless colony. So we just look for the queen again quickly. Just to be very careful with her, not to squash her. How do you determine why the queen is? Well, she would be she would be walking, so we would be looking we would be looking across the frame just to try to spot her. If she's not there, then we just continue and brush her. She's marked as well, and she has a, a dot on her back, a blue dot. So, and then after the sensitive stage, then we take the cells from the cell finisher and we put it into the incubator. That's a yellow box. There. That's from our graph we did a few days ago. Why do we put them in these cages? When in an don't, incubator. They don't escape when they're hatched. Okay, and what will they do when they escape? They'll when kill each other. That's it. So we put them in these rollers to stop them from killing the other queens. And if you notice, the cells are nicely, got nice indentation on them. So they really went to work on those queens and they cared for them. Another queen has hatched. Come on, buddy. She's not as big as the first one. So you guys have got a special treat today. You are seeing actually freshly hatched virgin queens. Right. I mean, we were there like 30 minutes ago. Uh, we don't keep them here more than two or three days. So this project we have from Jeff, uh, one of the outputs from the project is that we're looking at higher value products. For the last three years they've been working and producing um, pain relief cream which which uses um, uh, bee venom in it and we've also been working uh, one of the things that this project has sponsored Jeff SGP has helped us with is that we're going to be producing commercial medical grade bee venom for export into Europe, Europe and the United States. So if some of you may have noticed in the last few days there have been research in Australia where people have found um, aggressive forms of cancer can be treated with bee venom. This is stuff we knew for many years and this is why we, we pursued the field. Um, those of you who have been looking at COVID, some, there's been some talk about COVID could be cured by using bee venom and propolis. Um, but there are other issues, other areas where you can use bee venom for. I mean there's AIDS research that they've used um, uh, bee venom in, they have used it in the treatment of Lyme disease, it's one of the main only cures really or, or to help the, the people to have a manageable lifestyle and one of the things that we've also been looking at closely is because of climate change the yields of honey have fluctuated um, especially in the Caribbean um, maybe not so much in North America and Latin America where they've got massive agricultural sector that really works hand in glove with their apiculture sector but we in the Caribbean we're dependent more on natural forage so um, we've seen a lot of changes a lot of fluctuations based upon the climate change and the change in the environment um, which has forced us to say well we can't bank on honey as we used to before so we need to look at something else to, to help us keep our heads above water. 